6.4, we're going to be solving two-step equations now, so we're making it a little trickier. Um, the first step will be to undo the addition or subtraction first to get the term with the variable alone on one side of the equation. Remember that addition and subtraction properties of equality, so um, that is if you know I have a positive 2, I can add a negative 2 to cancel it out, but I have to do that to both sides because what you do to one side, you must do to the other. Step two is to undo multiplication or division so that the variable has a coefficient of one. So remember if um, I have three times x to undo that multiplication, I would do divide by three on both sides. Or I might multiply if I had something divided by, so if I had x divided by negative four, I'd multiply by negative four on both sides. So again, that's remembering the multiplication and division properties of equality. Our whole goal is to get the variable by itself, and the golden rule is what you do to one side, you must do to the other. Okay, when you are simplifying an expression, so when you are simplifying an expression, an expression means no equal sign, so no equal sign. Um, you're going to use Jim Doss. that's what we've been practicing with order of operation, right? But when you have an equal sign, it's an equation. So when you're solving an equation for a variable, you go backwards. So you undo the addition and subtraction. Then you undo the multiplication and division. Then you undo the exponent. You undo the grouping symbols. And you have an answer. So whenever... Um, you're getting confused on what your next step is. Just think of Jim Doss on your write Jim Doss on your paper and do it backwards. Okay, example one a. I have two x plus three equals nine. So the first thing I like to do is think, what's my first step? And I know that my first step is to undo addition or subtraction. So to undo the addition of plus three, I'm going to add a negative three to both sides. And if you, it helps you draw that line to show the two sides of the equation. Circle the variable, um, and I add negative 3 to both sides. 9 plus negative 3 is 6. 3 plus negative 3 cancels out, and I'm left with a 2x over here. So I have 2x equals 6. And now to undo, again, I'm still trying to get x by itself. This is 2 times x, so to undo that, I divide by 2, and x equals 3. So I circle it, and that's my answer but I'm going to check it. So I write, I have my original problem of 2x plus 3 equals 9, and it's telling me that x equals 3, so I'm going to plug it in and see if it really is. So I do 2, and then I do 3 in for x plus 3 equals 9. And I'm going to solve or simplify now. I'm not solving, I'm simplifying, so I do Jim Dawson, go back to Jim Dawson, I do multiplication, so 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 equals 9, and 6 plus 3 is 9 equals 9, and that is correct, so that means that I did the problem correctly, and x equals 3, so I can be happy with my answer of x plus 3. Okay, 4x plus 3 equals 19. So the first thing I need to do is undo the addition or subtraction. So I add negative 3 to both sides. And again, if it helps you, draw your line. Circle your variable. And 3 plus negative 3 cancels out. So I'm left with 4x over here. 19 plus negative 3 is 16. To get x by itself, I need to unmove that 4. So I use division to divide by 4, and I'm left with x equals 16 divided by 4 is 4, so x equals 4. And I circle it, and that's my answer. I'm going to do one more checking, and then um, I'm not going to check on the video just so I don't take up your time. If I were you, I would be checking on tests. It'll be worth points. So you do 4 times, and I'm going to plug 4 in there for x. plus 3, and it's supposed to equal 19. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3, which equals 19, and it was supposed to equal 19, so that means we got it right. So 
I say check, I got it right. That's a horrible check mark. Okay, 2a, we have 2 plus 3x equals 23. And this is where people start to get confused, so make sure you're paying attention. I draw my line to show the different sides of the equal sign. I circle my variable because that's what I'm trying to get by itself. And I look at what needs to be moved. Well, what addition or subtraction is stopping x from being by itself? A lot of people will instinctively say 3, but 3 and x have a relationship which is multiplication. So 2 is the addition relationship to x. So I add negative 2 to both sides. They cancel out and I'm left with 3x equals 23 plus negative 2 is 21. And then to get x by itself, I divide both sides by 3 and x equals 7. I circle it and that's my answer. Again, it would be a good idea to check, but I'm not going to take the time to do that and waste your time. Here I have 6 plus 5y equals 26. So I draw my line to show my uh, different sides of my equation. Circle my variable. I undo the positive 6 by adding a negative 6. And that leaves me with 5y equals 26 plus negative 6 is 20. And then to get y by itself, I divide both sides by 5. And y, oh, I don't know what's happening. y equals 20 divided by 5 is 4. And I circle it, and that's my answer. Okay, I have negative 2y minus 7 equals 3. So I add the opposite. And to get rid of negative 7, I'm going to add a positive 7. I'm left with negative 2y equals 3 plus 7 is 10. To get y by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And y equals negative 5. Circle it. And that's my answer. Okay, I'm going to start off by showing my different sides of my equation. I'm going to circle my variable c. I'm going to ask myself, what's the addition or subtraction that I need to undo? It's not what's being multiplied by c, it's what's being added to it. So I add a negative 9. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. Those cancel out. I'm left with negative 3c equals 3 plus negative 9 is negative 6. I'm trying to get c by itself. So I just divide both sides by negative 3. These cancel out. I'm left with c equals negative 6 divided by negative 3 is a positive 2. I circle it, and that's my answer. Okay, this is going to get a little trickier. If you weren't comfortable with 6.3, this might throw you a little bit. So, draw my line to show my two sides of my equation. I circle my variable, and then I look at what's the addition or subtraction to r, and 4 is being added to r, so I add a negative 4. These cancel out. I'm left with 1 fifth r equals negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5. Circle the r. And to move that 1 fifth that's being multiplied to r, I'm going to divide by 1 fifth. Those cancel out. And I'm left with r equals negative 5 over 1 times 5 over 1 because I keep flip change. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. So r equals negative 25. And I circle it, and that's me. Okay, again, I'm going to draw my line, and I'm going to circle my variable. And this throws people sometimes when there's a 0 over here. We just That's a number. We just treat it the same as if it was any other number. So to get rid of the 6, I'm going to add a negative 6. And what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So 0 plus negative 6 is negative 6, and I'm left with 1 third t, and then I divide both sides by 1 third, so I have t equals, and I have negative 6 over 1 times 3 over 1, because I keep flip change, and negative 6 times 3 is negative 18, so t equals negative 18. If you're getting confused here on how I'm going from division to multiplication, you might want a reminder on division of fractions. 
Victoria had her birthday party at the movies. It cost $27 for pizza and $8.50 per friend for the movie tickets. How many friends did Joy have at her party if she spent $78? Now, this is where people start to get confused because if they didn't, they had trouble making equations for one step, two steps even harder. But you have to think about what's a one-time cost. The pizza. It doesn't matter how many friends she had. They spent $27 on pizza no matter what. So you have $27 no matter what plus the $8.50 per friend. So you're going to multiply by how many friends she had. But we don't know how many friends she had, so we use, um, let's do F to represent how many friends she had. But we know that altogether she spent $78. Now we have our equation set up. We do it just like we did. We have our variable. So we add a negative 27 to both sides. And 78 plus negative 27 is 51. These cancel out and I'm left with 850F equals 51. And then I divide by 850. And I have F equals 6. So she was able to have 6 friends. I'm going to throw a label on there because I wouldn't want Ms. Cuckoo to take a point off. Louise's cell phone plan costs $39 per month. So he pays $39 per month no matter how much he uses his phone. Text messages cost an additional 15 cents each. If Louise's cell phone bill lasts Last month totaled 55.05. Write and solve an equation to determine how many text messages he sent. Now, you guys haven't lived in the day where text messages were per text message cost, but this is how it was when I was in high school. And so sometimes I would have to pay a bill of like $25, $75. Like, I don't want to exaggerate, but they got high because I would send too many text messages and I'd go over my bill and my mom would get mad. So, the $39 per month, Louise is paying no matter what. No matter what, he's paying $39. But for every single text message he sends, it's another 15 cents, which doesn't sound like much, but if you think of how many text messages you send, it makes a little bit more sense. So you multiply by that, that by how many text messages he's sending. So I'm going to do M for messages, because we don't know how many he sends. But we know that his bill is a total of $55.05. So we circle our variable, make two sign or make two sides. We add a negative 39 to both sides. Because what I do to one side, I must do to the other. And I get 15 cents times the messages equals 1605. And then I divide both sides by 15 cents. And the number of text messages sent was 107 messages. You could say text. That would be good too. I don't care. I suck it and that's my answer.